Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are previewing week one of the NFL, and right now our call-in guest is returning guest, Indian Cowboy from Doc Sports. Indian Cowboy, of course, is uh, one of the most viewed, one of the most famous professional handicappers on the internet, on YouTube, and I'm very happy that he's uh, back with us this year. Right now we're going to cover uh, Denver, Indianapolis. Indian Cowboy, thanks for being with us. My favorite sportscaster. What's up, Pete? Yo. How are you? All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm flattered. So uh, how's everything going in the world of Indian Cowboy? Are you still with Doc Sports? Tell us what's going on with you. Yeah, I am. Uh, sixth year with Docs now, and uh, the YouTube subscribership keeps going up, and uh, we're doing about seven or eight sports. Right now we're doing football, which is a big deal. Uh, perfect 3-0 last weekend in football uh, based on our math models. So we focus a lot on calculus, a lot of math models, a lot on stats, and uh, we just try to give as many prediction winners as possible. So 3-0 to start off the uh, football week last week, and of course we produced the number one NBA season in the country last year, going 94 and 62, 62% 62 for plus 12,850, which is really exciting. But uh, Really excited to do this every week with you. Every Sunday night football game, we'll be able to do it. So I'm excited about it. Nice job, uh, Indian Cowboy. Again, from Doc Sports is his website. And uh, now we're going to discuss Indianapolis and Denver. We'll see what you can tell us. Uh, Denver's a seven and a half point favorite. Of course, it's at home. Totals 55. And uh, you know, these lines are looking a little bit tough, but a little bit tight. But the Broncos are deep this year, as they were last year. And we remember what Bron what, what Denver did last year, right? Eight straight overs uh, to start the year until their bye. They were also a great bet on the year. 10-5-1 and one against the spread in the regular season. And 7-3-1 and one against the spread as a favorite of more than a touchdown. You know, Denver was the kind of team that the public loved to bet on as a favorite and the overs, and they won with it. So maybe we don't overthink ourselves here and lean Denver minus 7.5 and, and over. 55 again to start this year it is a different year though what do you think Indian Cowboy you know believe it or not I think for whatever reason Peyton Manning struggles against his former team maybe it's the psyche mm -hmm. involved in it but if you take a look at this contest Indianapolis has actually covered this contest last six times and this includes being favored by 10 being an underdog by three being a favorite by 10 favored by six and a half five and a half and underdog by three so every single time uh, for whatever reason Peyton just continues to struggle against his former team um you know, the two leans that we have here, and I'll tell you the one that we like the most, is Indianapolis, mm -hmm. but also over. Mm -hmm. But uh, believe it or not, on a Sunday night game, it's a fantastic fade. It's really hard to do this, but we actually like Indianapolis uh, plus the 7.5, plus the 8. We think they're going to hang tough uh, against Denver. Because think about it, everybody wants to take Peyton Manning right off that loss right. on the Super Bowl. It's such a common thing to do. Oh, my God, Peyton got destroyed against the Seahawks. Let's everybody on Sunday night just go ahead and take Denver. Uh, we actually have Indianapolis on our model losing by about five, mm. five to five and a half. So getting about seven and a half or maybe eight, and we would lean on the over, but 75% of the public is on the over. So we think it's probably going to go active. As you know, I'm big on the active dog over theory. When I think mm -hmm. there's an underdog that's going to be active or has a chance of winning outright, it has a chance of going over the post to total. Um, the books typically don't care about the total. What they care about is the side because it's much more important. So we think it's going to go Indianapolis and over probably, but our bigger lead is on Indianapolis simply because 6-0 and ATS, we have them by about five, five and a half points here. Uh, and the Colts are also, for whatever reason, they're, um, you know, they're 8-2 in their last 10 in the AFC as well, ATS. Um, so don't be surprised here. Um, we actually think the Colts are going to hang tough. And they're also 6-0 and ATS in the last six meetings as well. So, you know, we talk about this in our weekly football videos. Well, we go over all the NFL, SEC, Big Ten, and uh, Big 12 contests. And this is part of it because when you subscribe on YouTube, we talk about this even more. So that's why I like doing your show because your show is the first one we do. Hmm. Uh, for anyone else so let me just uh you know play devil's advocate here you know the colts are going to be missing robert mathis and he was one of the big factors in their uh win last year you know they see sack manning twice and also uh you know just in in the preseason indianapolis looked like they were having a lot of problems in the running game you know denver's looking uh healthier than last year and as strong or stronger indianapolis looks like they might be look might be having uh, some new problems they didn't have last year but uh, you, none of that uh phases you huh no and, you, and you'd be surprised here is that if the Colts were to do well, notice the line opened up at seven and a half and it hasn't moved at all. And I don't think it'll move until maybe even game time. Because I think if Denver is expected to do well, I think the line would be closer to nine and a half to ten. Mm -hmm. Because then the public would shift to sixty five Indianapolis and thirty five Denver. But because it's seven and a half, the two biggest trap lines in the NFL are five and a half, which is the trap line across all sports, college basketball, NBA, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. I mean that's why we finished number one in the NBA last year. Five and a half is the biggest trap line, but also the biggest trap line in the NFL. One of the bigger trap lines people don't know about is seven and a half. Because you think to yourself, Oh, I'll just take the sexy team, you know, minus the seven and a half. That's easy. It's only about a little more than a touchdown. But 
that's one of the lines that means that it tells you more than something that Indianapolis is probably going to do well in this game. Probably going to sneak inside the seven and a half. All right. Well, you know, my my very slight lead on this one, I guess, would be to the over at 55. But I trust you, Indian Cowboy. Indianapolis plus seven and a half does seem like a contrarian play, which, uh, you know, week one in the NFL might be a, a very good thing to do. The other thing about the over, yeah. too, Peter, is that almost 75 percent of the public's on the over. That's kind of scary, too. So. You know, the book is going to do it really well if it goes Indianapolis and the under, but typically it goes dog and over. That's how it typically works out. But uh, we'll see how it plays out. But you know, our, our lean here is plus the seven and a half, plus eight. You know, on Denver overs last year before their buy, the public was also pounding their overs week in and week out, and they won week in and week out. So, you know, Denver overs is Absolutely. not a, a typical, uh, you know, uh, situation where you want to fade the public. No, that's that's one of the exceptions. It reminds me of remember when the Patriots, um, right, they exactly. went on that speak to same thing. So yeah, you're right about that. All right, well that would be Mylene, and uh, you're going to take Indianapolis plus seven and a half. Thanks so much for your free pick, Indian Cowboy.